The Vilas monkeys, they arrived in the United States. They arrived in Wisconsin in 1972. The monkeys that uh, came to Wisconsin in 1972 were the very, among the very last to be trapped and shipped uh, from India. India stopped exporting monkeys to the United States. The United States had said that it had been using them in medical research, and in fact, they were using them also as experimental subjects in, in um, weapons research, ex exposing them to radiation. India found out that they were being used in, in military work, and so they said, you can't have any more of our monkeys, so they, they put a ban on them. Uh, we don't know how many monkeys were shipped out of, out of India. Estimates run various numbers, but maybe six to eight million monkeys were shipped out of India. Anyway, they canceled the exports of monkeys in 1972, and one of the last captured wild groups to uh, come out of India ended up here at the Henry Vilas Zoo. Those monkeys became the longest watched colony, most written about colony, most studied colony of rhesus macaques any place in the world. And that was the, there were those monkeys and their ancestors who had been watched continuously, who were at the zoo when the scandal broke. And if you don't know what the scandal was, I'll tell you. Um, then director John Hearn, he was the director of the Primate Research Center at the time, had been involved in a long-term um, extramarital affair with a graduate student who eventually earned her PhD and was studying one of the groups of monkeys at the, at the Vilas Zoo. Um, their relationship turned quite sour and he became quite abusive to her. Somehow, with, among her friends, people who knew her there, it wasn't her though, somebody who we're not entirely certain of, uh, sent the Alliance for Animals uh, hundreds of pages of documents. And those documents detailed the fact that the university had been secretly taking monkeys from the zoo facility and selling them around the country and using them in their own labs. Now the reason they were doing this secretly was because they had, there had been a number of protests at the zoo. There was graffiti starting to show up on the monkeys' cages and on the roundhouse is what it was called. Because people were going to the zoo, they, the monkeys, because they had been written about so much, many of the people in the community actually knew some of the monkeys by name. Um, then Governor Tommy Thompson's wife was a sixth grade school teacher. She took every year, took her class there to see the monkeys. The whole town knew who they were. They had read about them. This is a book whose, uh, there's a chapter in here that's dedicated to the, the vilest monkeys. And I, this is Peacemaking Among Primates. I'd really urge you to get a hold of this. Very interesting stories about, about primate behavior and their social worlds and their emotional lives. So everybody knew these monkeys. And there were these protests and the graffiti and stuff. So finally, the university entered into an agreement with the Dane County Zoo that none of the monkeys that were housed at the zoo would be used any longer in invasive experiments. No longer would they take them from the zoo. No longer would they use the monkeys at the zoo as a breeding colony. The monkeys were off limits. They said we could still use them in observational studies, but we won't use any of those monkeys for any of the harmful research that we do. And so they started working on ways to control the population, um, giving them birth control and th those sorts of things. So then it turns out, and they signed this agreement. This is a written agreement. It was signed by all of the senior staff at the Primate Center. So it turns out that within two months, I think it was, they started secretly taking monkeys out of the zoo again. Over an eight-year period, they signed two other agreements. It turns out that there were a total of four written agreements signed by the director of the Primate Center, agreements with the Dane County Zoo, that they wouldn't use any of those monkeys in any harmful experimentation. So when this affair between John Hearn and the, and the young PhD got hot and, and she actually went to the emergency room because she was so injured. So people got angry and they released all of these, they basically snuck these documents out of the labs and they gave them to the Alliance for Animals. So we all of a sudden had in our, had in our possession the records that over 200 monkeys over an eight year period had been secretly taken out of the zoo in violation of these written agreements. Now this matters because the people that were involved in those secret uh, removals of the zoo, of the monkeys from the zoo, are still at the Primate Center today. 
They're, the people who lied to you, who lied to the county, who lied to all of the citizens of Dane County are still there today. And they're still lying to you every time that they say something about how well the monkeys are treated. So a resolution got passed. It got uh, introduced. Um, one of the Board of Supervisors introduced um, a resolution saying that the monkeys at the zoo, oh, I should tell you this, I missed this key point. When, the, when all of this information be, went public, uh, actually we called, we called on the phone and we talked to the then director, um, uh, Joe Chemnitz, who's getting ready to retire. He's still there. He's going to step down as director, but he's going to continue his research. He's one of the people that's involved in the caloric um, restriction studies that have been going on for decades. We called him and we said, Joe, um, we have re uh, information that one of the monkeys from the zoo was, was taken out and sold to another lab. And Joe says on the phone, oh, that couldn't be because there's, a, there's a, an agreement in place. Those monkeys can't be used. Let me get back with you. So he calls back and he says, you know, that was, that was an exception. There is a, there's an exception in the agreement that we signed that said that monkeys with very unique genetic characteristics, we might be able to take those monkeys out on a very rare occasion and, and, and use those animals for the life-saving research, of course, that we're involved in here. So we said, well, oh, okay, well, that explains that one. Well, how about monkey, and we gave him a serial number, how about this monkey? Oh, well, there's another one? Let me check on that. So he calls back. Same thing. This is just another one of those very rare exceptions to the agreement. Well, Joe, how about this one? When he called back, we asked. He says, well, how many do you have? Well, we have hundreds of pages of these. And he said, I've got to get back. I can't talk to you right now. So he hung up. So... <laughs> the university had been caught, and they didn't know what to do. So, the, and they were, they were, there was no doubt. Even the then uh, dean of the graduate school issued a, a statement saying this, were, this was a complete violation of, these, of the, the trust that the, that the, the citizens of, of Madison and Dane County had put in us. We'd violated these written agreements again and again and again. Once the discovery was made that the university had been secretly taking these monkeys out, coincidentally, all of the funding for them dried up. And the university says, we can't have the monkeys anymore if we can't use them in research. We're going to have to get rid of them. And we're going to have to get rid of them right away, even though they've been here for now since 1972. This was in 1990. This was in 1997 when all this was going on. We have to get rid of them right away. And so we said, well, wait, let's see if we can't find something to do with them. Let's find, maybe the zoo can keep them. Maybe they, uh, we can find a sanctuary that'd be willing to take them. Oh, no, we have to get rid of them right away. So secretly, again, without telling anybody, they were on the, we have the emails from Joe Chemnitz to the director of other places saying, we have this scandal on our hands and we need to find a way to get rid of these monkeys pretty quickly. So, so that's the, that's the backstory. One of the Board of Supervisors found out about all of this, and he introduced the resolution that said, can't Dane County find a way to keep these monkeys here or at least make sure they don't go into further research since we'd signed that agreement already, and, or maybe they could get to a sanctuary. So the, introduction, the, in, the, the resolution got introduced, and then it had to go through all these different subcommittees. At every subcommittee, I think there were like four or five of these subcommittees that we had to get through before we went to the entire Board of Supervisors meeting where Helene spoke. At every single one of the subcommittee meetings, the university turned out and they had all these fear stories. They had all these statements about, you can't send them to a sanctuary because that'd just be a roadside zoo. That'd be a horrible thing to do with them. We can't afford to keep them here. In fact, they're now a major health hazard and, and if people get near them, they could get sick. They could get some hate, this horrible disease. They came up with story after story and in every one, every single one of the subcommittees that we went to, it was a unanimous vote in favor of the resolution. And the university, because they'd been caught lying, and people could see through what they were seeing, what they were saying, and knew they were just lying again and again and again. Every time we went to the one of the subcommittee meetings, we won. Finally, we went to the whole Board of Supervisors meeting. 
and the university brought its entire circus. I don't know how many speak people spoke from the university, but it was this orchestrated thing. They had decided they were wanted to send them to Tulane, down at um, Tulane University, the Louisiana Regional Pri National Primate Research Center is one of the sister facilities of the Wisconsin Primate Center here. And the director at the time was a guy named Peter Jerome. And Peter Jerome had a history of taking monkeys who had controversy surrounding them and basically uh, swallowing them up. Tulane claims that it's a private facility and is exempt from all federal um, open record statutes. So once an animal goes into the Tulane labs, you, there's no way to find out what's happened to him or her. So Peter Jerome said, I'd love to have these monkeys. So one of the vets came up from Tulane, one of the people who, who testified at the, at the Board of Supervisors meeting, and said that we're really interested in having these large groups of such well-studied monkeys, and we want to be able to have them there. And moving them down there into the Gulf Coast, it's going to be like you know summer camp or retirement camp because the weather is so great, and they'll be, get to be able to be outside part of the time. And, or all the time if they stay in these large colonies. Um, every person from the university that stepped up and said, well, we can't send them to one of these roadside zoos because they're so horrible. And so the resolution passed. The resolution passed, I don't know what the total number was, but it, was, it wasn't unanimous. There were a couple people who were friends of the university, of course, and voted on the university side, even though they, I think they knew the university had lied to the, to the county and were lying again. So we won. And then all of a sudden, um, th it became this, this uh, uh, the university started pressuring um, Kathleen Falk and started talking about, uh, Kathleen Falk was, the, was the, um, the, the, the county supervisor at the time, and they started really pressuring, pressuring her and coming up with these incredibly inflated amounts that, the, that it would cost the county to keep the, the monkeys here. Now, there hadn't been a problem before, and in fact, it was all all so, so blown out of proportion. But eventually Falk um, caved. So we got private funds that we could move the monkeys to a sanctuary down in South Texas. And the university said, oh no, we can't let the monkeys go to a sanctuary down there because that'd be just, a, it's a roadside zoo. So we lost. One morning the university drove up with its trucks it loaded all of the rhesus monkeys into the trucks. Not all, it turns out some are actually still here in the labs today. Some of those monkeys that were protected under the agreement. And they shipped over a hundred monkeys down to, the, to Tulane. Now, once they got there, they didn't keep them in their, in their large groups, their large well-studied groups like they had told the county board that they were going to do. They split them up immediately they put them in long-term quarantine by themselves. In the first time these monkeys had been separated from their peers ever. Um, and then they divvied them out into their research where most of them probably were uh, died as a result of studies in infectious tropical diseases, which is one of Tulane's specialties. Um, but then Tulane didn't want the stump-tailed macaques, the last 50 or 60 monkeys that were there because they're not very well used or represented in research. And so the university had on its hand um, a group of monkeys that had actually turned into a giant white elephant. And so they didn't know what to do. And so what would you think they might have done? Well, they looked all over first for a place they could sell them to or give them to so that they could be used in research and nobody wanted them. So then they went down to the same sanctuary that said that it would take the rhesus monkeys. And they said, will you take the stump-tailed monkeys? And they said, well, of course, we've said all along we would take them. So lo and behold, this place that was the roadside zoo that the university said we wouldn't send any animals down there, they decided that they would send the stump-tailed monkeys down there, and they did. They had themselves put on the board of directors so they could control information flow in and out of the place. And as far as we know, the monkeys are there and slowly dying of old age. So that's the story of the Vilas monkeys. Um, of course, I've left out tons of details, as you can imagine. There were um, hundreds and hundreds of articles in the newspaper about this. The Capital Times took the side of the county and the monkeys, and the, um, the University of Wisconsin school newspaper, the uh, University of Wisconsin State Journal, took, um, took the university side, of course. And so during the, the county supervisor's meeting, um, Many people stood up, and one of those people, 
who stood up and spoke for the monkeys, of course, was Helene Dwyer. Peter Jerome at Tulane has said that uh, he, he gets no word that the monkeys will not be used in research.